Hey everybody, it's Josie. Welcome back to Cedar Creek Homestead. I hope you guys are having a wonderful day. Um, it's nice out here on the porch. It's a little bit chilly, but not uh, too bad. It's a little overcast and we have just a little uh, chance of rain in the forecast. Um, and we're just enjoying this time. Um, the cows are, are back behind you guys and so I'm enjoying. If you ever wonder what I'm watching, I'm watching the cows walk back and forth through here. Uh, watch, I'm watching them eat and kind of uh, just keep an eyeball on them uh, to see if we've, you know, got any issues that we need to take care of. And and uh, the birds are singing. You can hear that. And we are looking forward to spring. Uh, we know that we've got a ways to go. And so when I hear those birds and get all excited, I just pick up the mountain of uh, uh, seed catalogs that I've been getting. I'm sure you guys have been getting some of those too. And look at those and dream about um, what all we've got to look forward to in the coming weeks and months. Now last Tuesday we talked about the ban on gas stoves and and uh, I had quite a few comments on that particular video. Most of them were very positive comments. Other people have, have uh, had read and saw the same articles whether they saw it on the news or they saw it in uh, articles in the um, online uh, sources that they follow and they had some very uh, strong opinions on what they thought was behind that but to my surprise I had qu uh, several people that were really adamant that um, all of this wasn't true that none of these things were going to happen and that really wasn't the intent of my video other than to just uh, put it out there that the um, think tanks were considering a ban and were considering that there were problems with uh, uh, or that they report reporting that there were problems with the propane and all of the other things and it was something that um, that I thought that we needed a heads up on some people went as far as to tell me that um, they heard on the news later that those reports were not true that they were false that we were trying to fearmonger and scare people and that was never the intent intent alone for me was to just uh, put out there what I read and I told you I explained to you in the last video that I um, tr I uh, read the story and I went and verified uh, what I was reporting on because I think it's responsible to do that I think a lot of news and reporting and even videos that people put out today uh, sometimes are to get views and to get uh, you know outdo the other others around them um, and they're not really following uh, they're not really making sure that all of the reporting is true and um, so I tried to, to verify uh, what I was reading trust but verify if, if you're a parent or you have ever been in control of littles whether uh, in preschool or teaching or being in teaching a Sunday school class you always trust but verify uh, if you've been in a leadership position a supervisory position you know that um, you know you need to make sure that when you're told something it's not that you just say I don't believe them that um, we're, that's not what we're out to do but we do need to make sure that the facts are correct and uh, and that what we are being told is something that is from a reliable source and I definitely to those that said well the news said this there was nothing to it I don't just trust one news source uh, you need to make sure that you're hearing from all of it and to make sure that you are verifying the facts that you're being told that they are uh, pushing and you can be guaranteed that what you are then yourself putting yourself on the line by repeating those things to someone else. I learned a long time ago in church that you come into contact with people sometimes that are well intentioned and they might teach or preach or say something uh, you know we get in a bad habit of sometimes of repeating what somebody else says because they're a good person and we have no uh, fear that they are intentionally telling us the wrong thing but they're quick to say the Bible says and so we make that a we make that uh, something of a gospel to us and say well the Bible says this uh, and it's not really in the Bible and so we always need to trust what we're being told verify for ourselves 
when you're in a Bible study, you follow along in the Word and you make sure uh, not that you're you're thinking that your teacher is reading something that's wrong, but you're going along yourself and you are, you know, agreeing with what you're seeing right there in print. And I'm not here today to argue. Uh, against those that had strong opinions against what I was saying you know you have a right to your opinions as well as I do but it bothered me that maybe some people thought that I was trying to scare them or or give them some kind of story that absolutely wasn't true and so I went back and I reread the stories that I brought to you last week just to make sure uh, whether they were true or false was did I read something wrong was it just one or two stations that had their own agenda? But it wasn't. It was news station after news station. It was publication after publication <coughs> that was reporting on these gas stoves. Now, my understanding is that after so many people raised cane over um, the news that they were considering this ban, that they actually backtracked some. Well, that isn't a false um, story that we put out there. That is, they changed their mind because people were in an uproar over it. Now, did, was I reporting it to you to say, this is going to happen tomorrow? No. I know that sometimes it takes a long time for an agenda to be pushed forward and for all the little pieces to fall in place for something to happen. Now. Trusting and but verifying doesn't mean that you don't trust the person and it doesn't mean that you think that they're lying But think about all of the times that maybe you've went to get a loan uh, That you've tried to acquire a loan and you have to fill out paperwork um, And those people or even going on a job on a job interview. They are um, verifying the facts that you've reported to them. There's not any, uh, I used to work for Walmart and when we would inter interview people for a position, it isn't that we deemed all of the things that they wrote down on their um, job application as false or that they were trying to trick us, but it was our job to make sure that we had one position and there were 20 people applying for it, that we got the best person for the job. And so we had to verify the facts that they were in themselves reporting on. And so, and it's the same way when you apply for a loan or you do anything, that you have to fill out paperwork to um, give people enough information to verify what you're telling them. We do that when we get a pastor in our churches or we, uh, all kinds of positions, you verify. You're not gonna think that your pastor or the person that's uh, wanting to be pastor of your church is giving you false information, but you want to verify that that person is indeed the person that they say they are, that they have uh, no issues that would make them unqualified. And so that's what we have to do. Now, I have been accused myself of wearing rose-colored glasses on, by Howie on occasion, by my son Blade, and different ones of having rose-colored glasses. And, and uh, you know, we, we know there's this, an old country song that uh, talks about rose-colored glasses. Do they, what do they mean by saying that a person has, that a person is looking through rose-colored glasses? Well, you're seeing things on the positive side. And I tend to do that. I don't like to see the ugly in other people and a lot of times uh, other people will be quick to say well they're this or they're that and I like to give people the benefit of the doubt I and sometimes I've been burnt by that because uh, I misjudged them other times I had discernment and um, and how he had discernment he was able to really know uh, what someone's what their real purpose in their agenda was and sometimes I know that's a, a weakness that I have I tend to look at people through a positive lens when I uh, first went to uh, went to Walmart to get a job at the home office I had to go uh, through an interview process and did fine with the interview process but, I, but they give you a test and I'm I don't know that they do that anymore but they gave me a test and it was based, it wasn't addition, subtraction, not that kind of test or spelling test or anything like that. But it was scenarios that if you had a coworker and they done this X thing and you saw them, what would you do? Um, and one question that I can remember in particular was what would you do if you had a coworker that had a, 
a drug addiction problem. And they gave you choices on what you would do. And one of them was uh, uh, report them or fire. I can't remember everything exactly. But I answered in a way that uh, would encourage them to, to get help and that they could take advantage of the help that was offered. Well, when they grade this test, they have a, a grading system that they do. And depending on how you answer your questions and how the results end up at the end, is it helps to determine whether they hire you or not. Well, thankfully, I had some friends that were already working for Walmart and had already spoken to their supervisor. And so she knew uh, about me. And so when I took the test, I failed the test because there's certain markers that they were looking for um, with honesty and integrity and all these different things. And one thing uh, about the answer that I gave for the person with the drug addiction um, was that I saw a positive thing in it as far as getting help for them, <coughs> <coughs> treatment for them, and not just booting them out the door. And um, because the, the supervisor at that particular time knew that I went to church and the way I believe things, she come to the conclusion that that is why I, um, great, uh, why I, I made the decisions that I did and answered the way I did um, because I wanted to be more positive and more forgiving. And so anyway, because of that, I was able to get the job uh, and, the, and that test didn't keep me from getting it. So I know that I tend to look at things through rose-colored glasses. But it's easy in this life to want to put our heads in the sand sometime and say, there's not any trouble, there's not any problems, there's not anything stirring in the background. And unfortunately, for us rose-colored glasses people, we need to wake up and smell the coffee and realize that there are some evil intents moving behind the scenes and there are some things that are working there are people that are working to push their agenda and to make things seem right even though they're not and we need to know that just because you turn the news on and the news says you know what that story that's being reported is not true it's okay for you to trust it but did you verify it? Did you go on to see um, that other news sources and other publications were reporting this same thing, these same facts that I presented to you? Did you go on to see that or did you just take the one news source that you listened to and because they said it's not true, that that's the way it is? Now you may be wondering why I'm spending this time today talking to you about whether or not uh, the, new, the, the story I brought you about the gas is true or not. And that's not really an importance to me, um, whether you believe it or not. Um, you know, I cited my, <clears throat> the resources and I put it out there and you know, you have to take that your own self, whether you believe it or not. But it does lead me to this. For years and years now, we've been talking about all kinds of different things. People talk about EMPs and they talk about what if this happens or what if that happens. They talk about what if our rights are taken away on our First Amendment rights or our Second Amendment rights. They talk about different laws that are passed and or not passed. We talk about whether we should have a well-stocked pantry or whether we should go a garden or whether we should have animals or not have animals and are the animals harming the environment. There's all kinds of things out there, but we need to make sure that we do our homework. Do your homework. Um, you know, lots of people put themselves on the line every day by bringing you information that you can apply to your family and to your well-being. And it's up to you to what it's up to you what you do with it. Um, you know, you either believe them and you verify what they're telling you, and then you 
hit the ground running and you do everything that you can to make sure that uh, you and yours are taken care of or you just simply sweep it under the rug and don't pay any attention to it at all and perhaps one day get yourself caught up in a situation that you were warned about. Now I think about all of the food uh, pantry wise and and all the stories that we've heard over the last uh, however many years five six even longer years where people have directed you to prep 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 put things back grocery prices are going to go high and look where we're at now we are you know egg prices and and i know that there are attributing factors to all of those things why the egg prices are high why the meat prices are high why it's costing more for aluminum goods and all of these things the bottom line is what what they have told you about making preparation came to pass and had we listened and trusted and but verified what they were telling you back then then those that are in a position now that wishes they would have listened wishes they would have prepared where would you be on your stores instead of worrying now and trying to figure out what you're going to do I don't glory in that at all in other prepping channels other survives other homesteading channels and others that are are trying to get you to prepare they don't glory in the fact of that or if they are i would say they're not really a store a channel that i would care to listen to if they're saying i told you so they should have compassion on you as well but things are getting tighter and tighter in the country and all the all the things that are going on there are so many regulations and rules and this you can't do and that you can't do and you know I think that we sh it would behoove us to go back and to listen to all of those ones uh, my Howie and others uh, brilliant people that are out there with videos today now does the world consider them brilliant not unless they have a whole bunch of letters behind their name and college degrees and all that, but I'll tell you, the common man, the blue collar man, they're pretty smart. They know, they've lived life. Look at the grannies and grandpas that had root cellars for years and prepared because they knew they could have a hard winter or they could have a storm or a drought and they needed supplies. So I think I've meddled long enough, I've tried to encourage you trust but verify if you don't trust the story that I brought last week that's okay I'm still your friend I still love you but I just wanted to get on here and say for those of you that said the story wasn't true did you verify it did you tr did you go out and not just trust that one new source that were telling you that it wasn't true because I went back today and it's all over the place you can read report after report where it was there and don't think that they don't have their toe in the door well, guys, I, this is Josie. I love you guys. I really do. Keep looking well to the ways of your household. Pay attention to what you're hearing. Trust, but verify. And until next time, we're gone.